I just want to send you a friendly reminder that your Google Classroom will be changing here shortly. It was decided that Google Classroom classes will be archived at semester time this year to help with the cleanliness and to kind of clean up some of the space, as well as to give you options, things like the originality reports can be used multiple times, but only three for per class. So that will now have another three available for originality reports. So there are a few things though you may want to make sure you do before that occurs. The very first thing you want to do is collect and gather all your new class resources. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. The first way I would suggest is go ahead and open up a, a class you normally teach in. You're going to notice a couple of things. You probably have it set up exactly the way you want it. Now, there are a few things you would definitely want to do. First off, you might have a set, like for instance, I have these office hours. And so it's got things like how the kids are going to get in their office hours. Uh, this is a science classroom, so how they create a lab report. And then maybe we had a special uh, sign up for Hour of Code. So um, what you want to do is you want to go into here. And one of the best ways you can actually do this is go ahead and go to docs.new. And that'll create a new document, a new Google Doc. In that Google Doc, you might want to go ahead and just jot down some notes. So maybe on these Google Doc, you can go ahead and say, you know, the first topic we want is office hours. And then the next topic we might want is class resources or however it is. I definitely recommend to take this time to go ahead and, and think about and reflect back on what worked and what didn't work for your students. Um, and again, remember this is uh, this Google Classroom is still going to be used this uh, semester um, and, and here on out. So you want to make it as, as user friendly for your students to where they can be as successful as possible. So maybe we have office hours, class resources, and then we're going to have a whole other series. So one thing you can do is you can go into your office hours, for instance. If you click on view material, you can actually copy all these details. And control C that to copy, control V to paste. Um, now, so this might be details and notes. There's a link in there, but if you are using links, say you've embedded a link, you can actually right click on that. Go ahead and click on copy link address. And so that way those links are already available at one location. Now that seems like a lot of work. You can actually use the reuse post as well in there and I'll go back over reuse post here shortly. So we've got our office hours and maybe another one where we wanna make sure that we keep a hold of is this how to create a lab report. Now the how to create a lab report is a Google doc. Um, so what you can do is you can actually go ahead and either grab the, um, the link to it. So you can actually right click again. We can go and click copy link and then maybe we want to go ahead and put lab report template. We can put that link on there. Now notice it is actually a link. So it actually goes to a specific file type. Um, it might just be easier to go ahead and type in the actual name of it and do a search on it. But again, all this is even easier by using the reuse post. So I'll show you that in just a second. So step number one, you want to go ahead and collect and gather new class resources. The next one is you want to open up again, you can use on the same Google doc. So we can just name this. We can name this planning for semester two. So on the very top, we've got all our Google Classroom resources that we want to make sure we reset up. And then down here, we're going to go ahead and say week one. And then we're going to have, you know, the welcome activity, maybe um, class procedures. Right, so we're going to do all that first day of the school stuff, but again, we're going to make sure we're prepared on a digital learning setup because we still do have kids that are going to be remote learners. Um, but again, we can start going into our actual content. So maybe uh, the first thing we're going to start into is getting a biology teacher. So we're going to go into DNA uh, material, and maybe we're going to go into DNA structure. And so into this welcome, we can actually go ahead and start typing in, welcome back to class. I'm glad to see you. And so all we're doing is we're just actually just creating that script that we're gonna go ahead and type and paste into our new Google Classroom. And so I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn on, in tools, my voice typing. Assignments are due at the end of the day, new paragraph. Be sure to type any comments you need for me to know in the private comment section. 
new sentence. New line. Any material not turned in will be counted late and could affect your attendance. Period. New paragraph. Go down here to my DNA material. Now, we might actually have typed this into our classroom procedures or whatever it was. But in the DNA material, again, we're going to go ahead and give it some context. DNA is made up of four nucleic acids. And today you will be discovering what those are via web quest, period. Please check all notes in the web quest and get as much information as you can get from the website to be prepared for the quiz on Tuesday, period. New paragraph. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Utah Genetics and grab that link. So here is the basic genetics. So I'm gonna go grab that, copy the link address. And so all I'm doing is I'm just making this whole plan. And with this plan, I can actually go ahead and prepare that lesson. So I can maybe do that and maybe I can do the Google Doc. So again, I'm just looking up and getting prepared for the new class. Because right now, those Google Classrooms are not created. But we've already got our plan out for semester two. So we're gonna collect and gather new resources and then go ahead and plan on a Google Doc. That Google Doc will be available for you after your Google Classroom is, um, is, is archived. So tomorrow, what you'll see on your Google Classroom. On your new semester, you'll now see that your Science 1 class is here, but it's now labeled as semester two. It might say dash two or dot two, but the two then represents the second semester. Now, when you open it up, you're going to notice again that your students are going to go ahead and be loaded into your people section as long as the master schedule is set. But your classwork section will be very empty. Now, there was a way that I talked about earlier about how you can actually come back in here and we can grab this information and copy and paste. But there is a better way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. I'm going to go down here to reuse post. Now, what's nice, the first section is once you go ahead and choose what class. Well, we're going to go ahead and back into the Science 1 class. And we know that it's the correct class because, A, it's Science 1, but also it says it's archived. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go over the, the office hours. And I'm going to go and create new copies of all attachments. Okay. Click Reuse. And now what it's doing is it go ahead and creates it. Notice that all, it adds that topic the way it was initially. And then it already has everything that's already been typed in, texted out, everything like that. At this point, you can also go ahead and go ahead and add it to your ELA, you know, whichever, some, you know, science one, science two, science three, semester two, semester two for each of those. So we can just choose a bunch of these. Go ahead and click post. And so now, if you notice, when we go back to Google Classroom, that topic is already set for us. The initial assignment is already set. We can do the same thing for our lab template. So again, again, look, it keeps it at the science one. So we're already in the right class. If you want to go back to a different class, we can click on that arrow. But we're going to choose how to create a lab report. Click reuse. And then here it is set up. Again, we can go back. We can choose the multiple classrooms. We can go ahead and click post. And that information is set for you and you're ready to go. And again, remember, these are removable, so you can move them up and down as you see fit. If there is something that you don't want to go, if you if you want to recreate a topic, that's fine. Again, we're going to click Create Topic. I'm going to hit Windows, period, so I can get my little emoji going. And I'm going to do a strong arm. And then we're going to call this Academic Success. I've seen there's very creative ways that teachers have used these emojis to kind of highlight specific places that the students should know how to use. So I'm going to grab my topic and drag academic success down here on the bottom. And now we can start creating assignments. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have that planning document out, ready to roll, and you can start building. The second thing you want to do is make sure that you go ahead back into your calendar and remove those topics. So what's, if you haven't, if, if you've never noticed, um, the, the Google Classroom do create calendars for each of your classes. These Google calendars 
are going to be listed onto your calendar and might get pretty large and um, uncontrollable as far as this. So I'm going to go down to my initial science one. So I'm going to go down over here on the left side. I'm going to find that science one class. So I'm going to scroll down. And if you get a lot of checked, you can actually right click or you can hover over the top. If you hover over the top, it actually does allow you to go ahead and display this one only. But today what I'm going to do is you can either hide it from the list or you can actually unsubscribe. It's not a big deal. I would go ahead and click the X to unsubscribe. That actually removes the science one from your classroom or from your Google Calendar. Go ahead and click remove calendar. And now that one has had been cleared up. So for instance, I can do the same thing on math one. I can say, yeah, go ahead and remove the calendar. And so all these ones that are in here, you're gonna have several several calendars. So see, I have each of my Google Classrooms and all these, all the trainings I've done for Google Classroom. I can actually remove those calendars and so it no longer is in my list of calendars because as you as you continue on um, using these tools, you will get a larger and larger list. So it's best to go ahead and clean that up. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and go into your drive, and you want to do the same thing for your folders. Now again, this is a suggestion, not a requirement, but you will notice that if you go to my drive over here on the left side, you have your list of drive options. Go down to the folder that says classroom. And in that folder in says classroom, you'll notice that you have every single class that was ever created. Now I've started archiving my classes and making sure that I've gotten listed out as far as the classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and archive and move those folders away from the current folder. So I'm gonna create a new folder. Just one of the new and folder. And I'm gonna call this the 2020, 2021 classes. Go ahead and click create. Now, I can actually find my science folder. So all those classes we've had, and we can do multiple select. So I can actually do, if I click and I hold the control key, I can select different ones in different orders. If I hold the shift key, I actually grab all within that line. So notice that these are all not blue. And once I have the classes that I no longer need because they were for semester one, I can grab them by clicking and holding and dragging them over here to 2021 classes and letting go. And it does remove it from the main classroom folder. So it clears up all that information over there. Okay. So again, make sure you check your calendar, check your Google Drive, and you're going to have to reset the, the topics using the reuse post or using your planning Google Doc. One final reminder is to manage your classroom stream. Students initially should only be able to post on comments or not post at all, as well as make sure that when you go into classroom stream, you hide all notifications so that you are able to limit the amount of information on the stream. So those are helpful. If you have any questions, make sure you do reach out to your instructional technologist, or you can always give me a call over here at 1222, shoot me an email, or reach out to me on Google Chat.